Hey everyone, welcome to another episode. I am just going to jump right in because I am so pumped to start this conversation. I am here today with Chloe Timchin, who is an award-winning singer, songwriter, speaker, and the creator of Super Brave, an interview series that features both kids and adults who are living with a chronic illness. Chloe is a survivor, having been diagnosed with a life-threatening illness herself and survived on oxygen for years, despite the fact she was given very little time left to live. 12 years later, she went into cardiac arrest, ended up in a coma for four days and on life support when she received a life-saving double lung transplant. If that's not crazy enough, she has accomplished so much. She sings with a paralyzed vocal cord and has wide, is widely regarded by her peers in the music industry. She's written with numerous Grammy Award winning songwriters and has been featured in the news, Huffington Post, New York Post, USA Today, has appeared on TV, Late Night with David Letterman, and the list goes on and on and on, but we're really not here to talk about that. We're here to talk about her story of perseverance and rising above adversity. Welcome, Chloe. Thank you. Oh my goodness, what an introduction. You make me want to meet myself. <laughs> <laughs> well, you yeah. are you're that cool. So, I, you know, I want to just jump in and let yeah. my audience hear from you because your story of just what you've gone through is so incredible. And not that you survived it, but that you sit here today with so much positivity and like so much zest and like just loving life. So let's just start with like, what happened? Where did, where did the, like the big shift come in your life where your life was kind of turned upside down? Wow. Oh God. What a question. I mean, it's been turned upside down so many times that <laughs> which one to pick, which one to pick from the batch, you know, <clears throat> excuse me, but I think <clears throat> it's sort of the idea. Oh, great. Of course, now I have something in my throat. Excuse me one second. <laughs> <clears throat> part of the deal, by the way, this is all part of what's what's going on. Uh -huh. And I hope that part does not get edited out. <laughs> yeah, well, it's, it's, it's there when I perform. It's like I have to excuse myself, go off to the side. It's like I say, you always have to find a way to do whatever it is you're doing. And it might not be the typical way. And it's been like that throughout. I think it's funny because I was just talking about this yesterday about the idea that it's everybody's like, oh, my gosh, it's like you're reborn with these new lungs and it's a new life. And I feel as though it's like I was born for the first time this time because it's such an awakening, you know, when you're faced with such, with, with dying really is what it is. I mean, you're literally told you're going to die. You feel like you're going to die. You die because I went into cardiac arrest and then you're revived and you come back and it really is like you, your eyes open up and you see the world in such a different way that of all of these times you're talking about, you know, these sort of new experiences, this birth, not even rebirth, feels like the most gigantic thing that could happen. And it's been just eye-opening, you know, in the way that I see the world and the gratitude that comes with that, the perspective that comes with that. I mean, so many of these things that sometimes we forget, you know? Yeah. So it's, I, that probably didn't answer your question. I, answer, I tend to answer my own questions, by the way. That's okay. I'll just answer another question. But, um, <laughs> We can do this all day. <laughs> yeah, exactly right. Four hours later, you know, they're like, oh my God. But I think that that's, I don't, again, I really don't know if that answers your question, but it, it, there are, it's just moment after moment of having to get through and having a new way of seeing life because of it, you know, um, having this past experience with transplant be the biggest thing that I imagine, well, at least in my life has ever happened, you know, such a, such a dr dramatic change inside and out so can you just give some background for yes. the listeners what is the health issue that you've struggled with and when how old were you when you first realized that this was happening so i was like normal kid doing my thing making music running i mean fastest on the team nothing was wrong you know and then at the age of 25 is when it just became so dramatically different for me. I started to not be able to breathe. I had terrible pain. It was like I had the flu all the time. I was coughing compulsively and it was not right. Like something was really not right. And I found myself, you know, I was performing and I couldn't even get onto the stage. By the time I got there, it was like, <clears throat> you know, and I'm like, wow, I really am out of shape, you know? So then of course I tried that. It was like, I, I mean, I went to every doctor you could imagine and I was diagnosed with everything. 
And then 24 hours later, they released me and they're like, okay, well, you don't have that. So I'm like, well, great, but what is this, you know? And it just got worse and worse and worse. And that was sort of a five year misdiagnosis situation. So just five years of not knowing what's going on and getting so much worse. Ended up in heart failure, ended up at that point being diagnosed with severe pulmonary hypertension and pulmonary venoocclusive disease. The second one is like life expectancy is like 15 minutes with PVOD. So I would, they were like, you need to have a transplant. You're going to you're gonna die. We don't even know if you'll survive. And I basically just sort of went my own way because I, I followed the doctors as much as I needed to. And then kind of went my own way because it was so depressing, you know, being told you're going to die and there's nothing we can do. And, you know, the medicine that helps pH, you can't take if you have PVOD. And I was like, oh my, you know, so I sort of went into my own world. And that's where I talk about these five key principles that I kind of, I mean, developed, I applied really to my life, um, which I can get into or not, but they all sort of really helped me in conjunction with some medicine, stay alive. And I maintained my life. And performed and did all that I could till last year. I have no sense of time, by the way, but last year I was in, uh, it just, it got so horrible. I was rushed to the emergency room, went into cardiac arrest and they revived me, thank God. Uh, then I was in a coma for four days and then I was on life support ECMO uh, for 21 days. And then it was a matter of, I mean, to the day I needed a lung transplant, which was the scariest thing for me, a transplant, scarier than death at the time, until you really face death. And then you're like, okay, please give me a lung transplant, you know? So it was to the day we received a phone call because they were looking at me like this girl is not surviving another day. And so we got the call and it was just the most miraculous I mean, from the nightmare of what it was to the most gigantic miracle you could imagine, because you this is the chance at life again, and boom, it happened. Tricky surgery, not easy, welcome to my world. <laughs> and it, thank God, it, so far, so good. It's been unbelievable, um, and I can breathe, and I feel amazing. You know, there's still things I have to take care of because of ECMO and what it sort of left its mark, ECMO. But in terms of the transplant, it's just such an amazing thing. I just, it's so hard to describe how grateful I am to be alive. And as, as I say, I feel like I'm living for two people, you know? So it's this added something that I can't explain, you know? Did you ever get to the point where you were so low? Like I think so many of my listeners are going through a divorce, right? And so when you're going through a divorce, you feel like, you feel like your world is caving in. It's the worst place that you can be. And I think that where you were, I know where you were is the worst case that that can be. But so often when you're going through something really hard, there's that moment of like, you know, just that crushing grief and you can't get any lower. And then the only thing to do is kind of climb up from that. Did you have a moment like that? Or were you always kind of positive and had the outlook of like, okay, I'm going to make the best of this? I think that you, in a situation like this, you know, I can only speak for what I know. And in a situation like this, it's so intense that it's almost like and i don't mean to say this in the wrong way but i've had those moments but they're not when it's this intense mm -hmm. when it's this intense your will to live in my case is so strong that i wouldn't allow myself to go there because i i think it's almost too dangerous in a situation like that if you kind of allow yourself to get sucked in by what's happening you could get sucked in um and so i think that with every single thing Thing. And this is at the most dramatic place where they're like, you're going to die. There's nothing. You're in the hospital. You can't breathe. You can't move. I, I just went in my head. I just sort of the perspective that I had in my head, thank God, was there. And it was just like, you need to get yourself out. There's no question. You need to survive. So if they're telling you that walking, that you got to get out of the bed, even though you can't feel your legs and you can't move and you're on ECMO, get out of bed. So it was like, I, I just went into this automatic mode to, to preserve my life. Now it's almost, like I said, it's harder when maybe it's, at least for me, it's been harder when it's not as dramatic actually, because mm. you waver, you're like, well, and then you sort of allow yourself almost to have all these options because you have the fortune of not dying. You know what I mean? So you're kind of faced almost with too many options. <laughs> you know, you're like, well, I could go this way or this way or this way. And, you know, I mean, in a situation, I, I, it's hard to sort of speak for another situation. Um, but in this one in particular, it was so 
clear in my head. I'm like, I have to go. And I always say, you know, this clear vision and hard work is how you get, I feel, to where you need to go, you know? And of course, so many things are part of that gratitude perspective, sense of humor. You know, even on my deathbed, I was like making jokes with my doctor, but because that's just the way that I am. But um, yes, I think that it can apply in any situation, but again, you have to really know what you want. And in that case, I really knew that I wanted to live and that's so it was just boom, automatic. Mm -hmm. uh, it might, that might again, not answer the question specifically, but I think that again, in my case, it was clear. It was so clear what I needed to get to. I didn't let myself go there. You talk about having five principles and I would love if you could share one or two of those. Yes, of course. And they're, they're sort of easy and quick and they're very obvious. They're, they just were so helpful to me. Um, nutritional lifestyle. So the way I kind of use food to heal my body. Uh, mindset, put just completely brainwashed myself into believing I was going to get better no matter what I was being told. Exercise, which to me at the time was walking from my couch to the bathroom, which was huge, you know, and then sort of pushing myself every day a little bit more to do what I wasn't supposed to be able to do. Creative expression, which for me is music, but it's really shifting your spirits, you know, into something that is not where you are. So sort of getting yourself out of your situation. For me, that was, you know, a world that, that there was no pulmonary hypertension in the world of music. So that was my escape. And um, mindset, oh, family and friends is the, the last one. Spending quality time with the people that really matter to you. But like quality time, not just sitting there like, oh my, this hurts and that hurts, and, but really just having a good time and enjoying life, you know? So let's talk a little bit then about mindset, because how do you change your mindset? I think that that's something that that it's so hard for you to get caught up in the for anyone to get caught up in all of the woe is me and the victimhood yeah. and, you know, what's happening to me. Like, how do you act? How do you have? Did you actually change your mindset? I think it's always been for me perspective. You know, I think I just have a I always sort of see things as, oh, okay, let's resolve this instead of sort of falling into the trap of, oh, no, I don't think I've ever really felt why me, why did this happen? I sort of feel that there is a lesson. You know, again, this all sounds corny because it's repeated so much, but I really feel that like this has happened for a reason. I have learned so much from this that with everything that happens, I'm like, oh, no, here we go. But all right, what are you trying to, <clears throat> to teach me from this, you know? And so it really is about that for me. And I'm always like, all right, how do I, it almost becomes like a video game of my life. I'm like, ah, oh, why'd you put this there? You know, now I have to figure out my way around this one. But I think because I do maintain perspective, um, I, I sort of see it as, all right, let's, let's resolve this and let me get the lesson and then let me move on. You know, uh, I don't fall into that thing. Now, let me say, I have days that I'm like sobbing from fear and like, oh my God, it's, it's never sort of, why did this happen to me? It's more fear and pain. Sometimes I'm in like pain. So I'm like, I just cry because I'm like, oh, this is exhausting, you know? Like when my, I couldn't, my mouth and my legs and I couldn't walk and my feet were blown up and I had all these sores on them because of what ECMO had done. I'm like, you just get tired every so often of having to feel a certain way whether it's whatever it may be in life, you just get exhausted. And I, I'm like, go for it, cry, do whatever it is you need to do. But then like, give yourself that time to do that and then move on, get over it. You know, I mean, it's easier said than done, but move on because you don't really, you know, your life is going by and you don't really want to spend your time in that place. So for me, I just sort of let it happen, get the lesson, cry when I need to get, oh, get it done with and move on. What is you? I, I love that because that's something I talk about too, is mm -hmm. um, allowing yourself to grieve kind of where you are, yes. but then there does come a point where you have to stand up from that. So like, yes. what do you think is that? What's the end point? Like, can you grieve for a week? Is this a day long grief or is this something that you're going to do for a few hours and then brush off? Like how long have you actually kind of gone through that process? Goodness, I think it's so different for, for everyone. It's hard for me to say what anybody else should ever do, you know, because and depending on the grief, I mean, oh my God, you know, I mean, I, we just lost this sweet little boy from pulmonary mm -hmm. hypertension. It was such a, he was a really close friend of mine. He became such a close friend of mine. And I think of his mother and I'm like, how would you 
ever be able to talk about grief from that. Like yeah. that woman, if she grieves for the rest of her life, deserves to grieve for the rest of her life. You know what I mean? So I can't put a time frame on it for people, but I can say for myself that I get bored really quickly. And so I literally will bore myself into something new. So I will allow, and, and I, I, I don't like to stay in a certain place for too long. I'm, I'm very inspired by life, so I like to get out of it. So I kind of go full force for, for me generally. I mean, it's not long. It's, you know, I'll take like an hour, like it's quick. And I, and I just cry and I cry. And then by the end of the hour, I'm sitting there, I'm like, yeah, I'm, I'm not, I'm bored. <laughs> like I actually bore myself. So, <clears throat> but I do have to get it out. And I do have to say, I talk a lot. So I don't, I have a wonderful group around me, including boyfriend, parents, friends. I'm very close to, it's not a lot of people, but the people that I am close to, I'm very close to. So I can really talk and that really does help to just get it out and then sort of have your own grief, grieving thing, spit it all out to the people who will take it and listen to you and then just on, move on, you know, for me, at least that's what, yeah. what works. But do you th do you think that had you not gone through what you've gone through that your life would be the same like you would have that same positivity same like has this been mm -hmm. something obviously it's changed your life but has like are you able to sit back and say wow this changed my life for the better because there's something that came out of it like I'm a different person now than I would be if I hadn't gone through this illness I know that's a hard question but I'm just curious on your perspective of that. I think a hundred percent. It has changed so much about me. It's, I almost don't even know where to begin. Now, would I choose to not have gone through this? Uh, it's a tricky thing because when I'm in severe pain and on my deathbed, then I would have said, don't give me this for the lesson. Like I would have preferred to not have gone through any of this truthfully. Um, but when I feel better and I'm able to feel better and have learn the lesson i'm like oh i get both in one i get feeling great and the lesson then i get it i'm like wow i see why this had to happen i i do feel very different i feel like i um was sort of in a i i didn't have uh, the appreciation i mean even remotely for being alive and for existence and just the moments of my life seeing them feeling like i'm awake in this world i didn't have any of that before i was also a lot younger but i really didn't see that you know and it was all about music and you know forget like yeah i love my family and my friends but that uh, let's just my career and my you know all these things that were me 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 and i'm still very like you know a me 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 but um but it's so different i can see the time and the value and spending that time with the people you love and and i see so much that i didn't see uh and again, the gratitude is like a million fold for every single thing in life. I walk outside and I'm like, I live by mountains now. And I'm like, I could stare at the mountain for like an hour. I'm like, can you believe that now? You know, it's like everything you see, it's so differently. And breathing, I mean, my God, would I have ever appreciated breathing? No, <laughs> I don't think so. So it's the simple little things in life you see so differently. And those happen to be, I think, big things in life, you know? And so it's a difficult question to answer because again, man when you don't feel well and you're facing death and you're on ecmo and i was hallucinating and in more pain than i could imagine i would have given up all the lessons i would have learned in one second you know so that's that's the truth you know um but i have learned a lot chloe what what do you say to someone who is going through their own struggles and their own adversity about how they get through it of someone who is at that moment where they're like i'm never going to survive this i'm not going to get through whatever it is that that is giving them a hard time do you have any advice for them well i do feel it's sort of like the thing i say which is the impossible can always become possible as long as we're still breathing you know and so yes feeling like that is a real feeling that we can all have but we don't have to feel like that i mean the way we feel and the way we think and the way we see life and it's really a choice you know so no matter what's going on everybody has their way of sort of overcoming this but whatever it may be that's going on it's sort of the idea of at least in my mind again letting yourself experience whatever it may be but really deciding how you want to live your life because that's your life like it's almost like the jokes on you if you're not having enjoying it because 
at the end of it all, what, what happened, you know? And I can tell you lying on my deathbed, I, I looked back like I was 90 years old and I was like, oh wow, like how did I live my life? And all those moments that I worried and I wasn't happy and I was complaining and I was, I'm like, God, if only I could have not wasted that time in that space, you know? So again, I really do feel like it's a matter of choice. Um, we can put in here whatever we want. So there is a shift that can always happen, you know, and it's just a matter of deciding you want to shift that and seeing it in any way you want to see it, you know, no matter what is going on. It's like, okay, if this is the hardest thing in the world, let me just let it happen, cry about it, figure out what in the world is trying to teach me, get the lesson, move on, live your life, be where you are, you know, and really just exist in a, in a beautiful way because it's this only that i think this is the only life we have as far as i know and you know it's just a shame to let it go by not being in the in the mind frame and spiritual frame that we want to be in was there anything so after that moment after you got your second lease on life did you do something big after that did you make a decision to go all in or something um because of that moment well, I think, and correct me, maybe I don't understand the question, but I, the biggest thing for me then was to perform again, you know, and it was sort of like, I have these new lungs. I can't quite, it was so weird when you have new lungs, because you don't really know how to breathe into them correctly. And my voice was completely broken. Like I could barely sing. And I thought, I, I really want to perform for the doctors at the hospital who gave me life. So that was the biggest thing. And I, again, I don't know if this answers your question, but I did it. And it was the worst performance I've ever given in my entire life. It's terrible because those are the people that saved my life. So I wanted to give them the best show. And sure enough, it was horrible, but it was a wonderful experience because I was there. I was alive doing it and making it happen. Uh, does that, does that answer what you, it what you were asking? Totally answers that because I think that, I think a lot of people would default to, okay, this thing happened to me. I can't use this gift that I have because mm -hmm. it's been taken away from me. And you, you said two things like one, I'm going to continue to do what I love and I'm going to do it imperfectly, which I love that because I would think like as someone who you have a talent and you've performed to some certain level or standard mm -hmm. that you have. And then all of a sudden to not reach to what, you know, you're capable of, I mean, that must be really hard. Yes. And it's like I say, and it's really hard because I'm very much a perfectionist and I know that it will never be perfect, but I still strive for that. But I, um, but it was such a big deal because, oh God, I forgot what I was going to say. It was very specific about this performance. Oh, it's gone. It's gone. I would sit here and waste everybody's time while I think about it, but I don't want to. Um, oh, if it comes back, I'll let you know, because it was very specific about this performance. Ah, I hate when that happens. <laughs> As I'm talking, I forget what I'm saying. Nice, yeah. nice. It happens, it happens several times a day. Oh, like, you're not alone. I got it. It's the do what you can with what you have thing. You know, and it's always been like that for me. It's like whatever you need to do to make it happen, do that. You know, and it's fine. I have found alternate ways of doing things this entire time. Um, now for over like 13, 14 years, it's been, it's just you find a way to do it. You find another way to do it, you know? And that's what it has been. Otherwise, what you're waiting for some perfect time that doesn't necessarily exist, you know, and then it never happens. Yeah, absolutely. And I think well, so many of us fall into that, right? Like if we can't do it perfectly, we're not doing it all. And yeah. then we just don't do it. I'm, I've definitely been guilty of that too. Chloe, how do we find you on social media and connect with you? Because everyone should be following you. Well, thank you. Uh, the best way is probably, I mean, I'm on everything with my name. So it's youtube.com slash Chloe Temption, Instagram slash Chloe Temption. But I think the center hub is my website, which is again, <laughs> Chloe Temption. It's uh, chloetemption.com. So the best ways to go there to sign up and we have, we give away things all the time and I share my story and that's sort of the easiest way to stay in the zone. If you'd like to be a part of my world. <laughs> Chloe, what is next for you? Because I have a feeling you are just getting started. Surgery, <laughs> if I'm being <laughs> honest. I had surgery on March 10 to repair my leg. Um, but aside from that, things are building, which is really great. And I, I try not to see too far in the future right now because it's a scary thing for me. But I'm planning uh, performances. We're, we're working on performances currently happening online because of the state of the universe. But um performances, speaking things that I do. 
So a lot of that happening, and then I'm releasing tons of new music. Um, I'm releasing a little ebook uh, coming soon. So lo lots of things being released, which will all be announced uh, via my website and every other social media outlet. <laughs> that's that's but amazing. Yeah. Thank you so much. You are an absolute beautiful soul. I am just, I'm so inspired by you. Like, I feel like if I'm getting into a rut and I'm having a day and I like, I have to like tap back into this interview and say, well, how would Chloe handle this? <laughs> what would she I'll say about it? I'd be like, hey, go cry for a bit and then let's get over it and go have fun. <laughs> right. No time to waste. Yeah. I love it. Thank you so much. Thank you for having me.